God said through Paul in Romans 12, verse 3, God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. But where have we placed that faith? Hi, I'm David Daniels from Chick Publications. I was in Bible college in 1981, the year of the rapture. Did you miss it? So did everyone else. Bible prophecy experts pieced together a theory based on a bunch of assumptions that the Bible never actually said. One, that the, a generation was 40 years. That the budding of the fig tree that Jesus mentioned was meaning Israel becoming a nation. That 40 years after Israel became a nation, that Jesus would come in his second coming. Then take away seven years for the seven years tribulation, and you come up with the year 1981, where Jesus had to come back in the rapture. A lot of people place their faith in that theory. Some of my Bible college friends left school because of the theory. Well, if Jesus is coming back this year, why go to school? But the rapture and Jesus and the end didn't come. Did they really place their faith in their theory over the scriptures? Because Matthew 24 and Mark 13 both say, But of that day and that hour knoweth no man. But they hedged and said, Yes, but we can know the month and the year. Seriously, I have read scads of stories over a hundred years worth of people who ruin their lives by date setting and messing with that scripture. After that, I started reading some other books on Daniel and Revelation. One of the books in our college library claimed that the book of Daniel wasn't really about the end of the world anyway. It was really about, they claimed, a priest named Onias III in 175 BC. Now, at the beginning of the book, it seemed to make sense. But something stirred in my spirit. Something seemed to be wrong. You know, I came out of cults and the occult, and often, like in Mormonism, they withhold the truth from you until you're already on their side. Then they reveal the other stuff. So here's this big book acting like all the questions were solved at the very beginning. I smelled a rat. So I started checking. I found out that these scholars didn't really believe that the Bible had any predictive prophecy at all. In fact, they disbelieved in prophecy about the future. As I turned toward the back of the book, I found all sorts of scriptures where God completely refuted their belief. If they'd have placed those scriptures at the beginning of the book, anybody could have told how unbiblical a system they had come up with. They may have disbelieved that the Bible has predictive prophecy, but God says in Daniel 2.29, and he that revealeth secrets, God, maketh known to thee what shall come to pass. That's Daniel 2.29, right in front of them. It's a no-brainer, if you trust God in his words, but they did not. Their own book claimed the Bible was man's words, maybe inspiring words of a man, but not the inspired words of God. See the difference? I've read so many of these guys' books over the years. You can read it in the way they write. They are so stuck up. Why are you living in the dark ages? Don't you realize God doesn't talk to people like that? Trust us, we have the truth. Come up and leave in the present day. Yeah, with all this doubt and unbelief, are you really surprised that they get upset that we believe that God actually preserved his words for us in English in the King James Bible? And we not only read the King James, but we believe it, even when we don't understand it. The scripture corrects us 
we don't get to correct or change the scripture. It gives us no wiggle room. The scripture is always right. Romans 3 verse 4 says, Yea, let God be true, but every man a liar. Of all the people I've seen who don't trust the King James, I have not yet met one who can point to a non-King James book that he can put his complete faith in. So where do they place their trust? I hope they don't place it in their own wisdom to figure everything out. Because Romans 1.22 says, Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. The scripture says in Romans 12 verse 3, the whole verse now, For I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. So every man has the measure of faith. And we have two choices where to place it. In the infallible, preserved words of God, or the fallible words of men. Right now, why don't you just pray to God and say, Father, where do I place my trust? And then pay attention to what he shows you. It could transform your life. God bless you, and have a wonderful day.